Now, China has deep interest in Africa for some time now, but how does it differ from its approach to South America and the Caribbean? Well, uh, it's, it's China's uh, engagements in Latin America and the Caribbean are really a mirror image of its engagements in Africa. It has a, a diplomatic structure known as the uh, China uh, uh, CELAC Forum, uh, CELAC uh, standing for the Caribbean and Latin American countries, which is modeled after the Forum for China Africa Cooperation or FOCAC. Uh, the Caribbean and Latin America side is, 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 is younger than the African side. Uh, the China CELAC Forum was established in 2014. Uh, the FOCAC Forum has been around since uh, since 2000. Uh, there are quite a number of uh, similarities in engagements, uh, wh whether you look at uh, the Confucius Institutes or economic development uh, and other elements like security and defense. But there are also key differences, as you point out. One of those is on the economic side. Uh, uh, the Caribbean and Latin American economies uh, tend to be much more developed than their African counterparts. And I think that has given them more leverage in negotiating things like uh, free trade agreements. Uh, there are about uh, six uh, uh, Latin American countries that have uh, successfully uh, 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 negotiated free trade agreements with, uh, with the People's Republic of China. In Africa, it's only one country, that's Mauritius, although countries like Kenya have expressed interest. So I think the, uh, the Latin American and Caribbean partners and their economies are much more diversified and much more developed than their African counterparts uh, have uh, greater leverage, it seems to me, right. uh, than their African partners. Uh, Paul, in all of this, what does Africa stand to gain from China? Africa stands uh, a lot to gain uh, in a number of areas. Uh, one obvious one is education. Uh, China, before COVID, was educating more African uh, uh, students and uh, uh, civilian uh, professionals than any other industrialized country. Uh, so that is the one element, and 99% uh, of these uh, uh, beneficiaries come back to the African continent. So there is a capacity building element there. Uh, African countries can also benefit, I mean, in terms of infrastructure, there's an infrastructure gap of over $2 billion a year, according to the African Development Bank. And so if uh, infrastructure finance is used in a, in a sustainable way, uh, if uh, countries are able to ensure that they do not, that they protect themselves from odious debt, if they ensure that they have a greater oversight and accountability in negotiating debt with Chinese lenders, then the African continent can develop a lot. And uh, I think uh, there are examples of African countries that have been uh, that have been very very skilled in negotiating with the uh, Chinese uh, lenders, uh, and also on the Latin America side. So I think uh, across the board, on both sides of the Atlantic, there's a lot of learning and sharing uh, that uh, that uh, African and Latin American counterparts can actually learn from each other.